Okay, today we're going to look at character sets. So we're going to look at how computers store our characters. So pause the video, take a few seconds, have a think about where these languages come from. Okay, so top left, we've got Chinese symbols. Bottom left, we've got the Greek symbols. Top right, we've got the Russian alphabet. And the bottom right, we have Arabic. And you'll notice that all of these languages use a different alphabet to ourselves in the English language. So when if you think about using a traditional computer, for example, our keyboards are written with English characters and symbols, this wouldn't be appropriate for these nations. So we can look at the terms of ASCII and Unicode as the character sets. We can look at how computers use binary numbers to store and represent these characters using these character sets. So what is a character set? So first of all, it's plain and simply put, a character set is all of the possible symbols, that's including letters, numbers, punctuation marks, any button that you can press to input data into your computer um, needs to be mapped out. So what happens is when you press a key on your keyboard, a binary number is sent to your computer and that binary number is converted into a corresponding symbol using this character set. So you can think of it as a way of mapping binary codes that are mapped to the numbers of to the keys on your keyboard to something that makes sense to us as humans. And you'll see an example of this. So we've touched already briefly on different languages and the need for different character sets in different languages as well. So the fact that our keyboards that we're all probably set in front of right now are using English letters and numbers uh, and symbols. And when we're looking at different countries, so for example, places like Russia and China and Greece, they'll use a different alphabet to it. And therefore, with that being said, when they press the buttons on their keyboard, they're going to have a different way of mapping those characters. ASCII is one of the most common sort of types, okay? So you don't need to worry about remembering what ASCII stands for. You just need to know that ASCII is either seven or eight bits. So seven bits is uh, seven zeros and ones to make up a singular letter. Extended ASCII, we use eight bits, giving us a possible uh, total possible number of 256 different characters that we can use on a keyboard. That's enough for every single key on a keyboard, including all of its secondary functions. And what I mean by that is, a, when we press that, has a lowercase, but also can be uppercase as well. And they have different binary numbers that represent them. Here is an example of an ASCII table. Now, this is how a computer will map binary codes to the corresponding letters. So looking at this table, looking at the capital A, so we're on the left-hand side here, the capital A, you'll notice will start 0, 1, 0, followed by 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, which is the actual number 1 in binary. So the first letter of the alphabet, and 0, 1, 0 at the start tells us that it's a capital A. If we look at the same for lowercase a, lowercase a starts 0, 1, 1, telling us it's lowercase, but again, that same format, 0, 0, 0, 1, so that first letter of the alphabet. Notice that B is 2 in binary, those final five digits, C, 3 in binary, so it corresponds with its location in the alphabet. Unicode, however, is a more up-to-date version of mapping characters, and this allows for a much wider range of characters to be represented. So typically it'll be between 16 or 32 bits, so 65,000 plus possible different symbols and characters, which enables for a much more universal character set, so that when you're using the keyboards, you can set it and use multiple different languages. You can then obviously have things like uh, emojis as well. All of those things can be mapped against a single character.